Today's hottest music, Hot 103, your boy Henry G here with you on a Sunday afternoon. All your favorite Latin, hip-hop, and oldies right now, though. It's an honor to be joined by one of the legendary radio personalities and one who truly paved the way, Art LeBeau. Welcome on a Sunday afternoon. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty good, Henry. Thank you for the compliment. It's all good. I truly appreciate it. Now, there's so much to cover. Uh, let's go ahead and start at the beginning. How long have you been involved in the radio industry, and how did you get your start as a radio personality? Well, I've been in music over 50 years, and uh, I started uh, by being an engineer. I'm a radio engineer, um, and um, so I started in San Francisco. I went in there to get a job as an announcer, and I was turned down. Um, but uh, just as I was leaving, the manager said, and besides, you need an FCC license because we use combo people. So I pulled out my licenses I had uh, First class radio telephone and a first class um, radio telegraph, and I pulled them both out. And said, well, I have those. And he said, You're hired. And I, I said, Why is that? I said, You just told me it wasn't. Well, I need that license on my wall because all my engineers are gone. I don't have a first class radio telephone license on my wall, and that makes me legal. Now I got my job. Wow, that's crazy. Now, one of the things that's always made your show unique is the fact that in addition to playing the well-known hits, you've also played some of the underground and lesser-known oldies. Tell us how that came about and how it was originally received. Well, what happened there was um, most of that was done by the listeners themselves. They'd call in and ask for certain songs uh, that I hadn't heard of, and I'd run them down and um, and then uh, put those on the air along with uh, the big hit and some of the currents where the music fit or going more by the sound of the music uh, for instance Smokey Robinson did stuff in the 60s and he also did a lot of stuff in the 70s and 80s and he, the sound is the same so I could mix those and I think that's the key of playing music whether no matter when it was done if it's kind of in the same genre then you can mix them together pretty good what were some of your initial and early goals in the industry and do you feel like you've accomplished all those at this point <laughs> yeah i think uh, you know are all my when i i started being real interested in radio when i was eight or nine years old and um you know just dreamed of being on the radio and uh, i think i think uh i uh, reality has uh, really exceeded my dreams you know just uh, had a lot of luck along the way, and uh, so they say uh, most everything I really wanted to do, I've done, and still doing. Early on, who were some of your biggest influences and people that you looked up to in the industry? Well, in the days when um, I was real interested, um, there were still no such thing as uh, disc jockeys. They were radio announcers, so they weren't called disc jockeys or radio personalities. They were just announcers that would fill in whenever there was music to play you. You'd have a few records and put them on the air. But I really started out wanting to be a radio announcer. And little by little, it turned out that I was able to um, become a, what it's called, uh, probably what they call you, a radio personality rather than just a DJ. Now, you have a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You've also been featured on the front page of the L.A. Times. Um, you have a compilation series that's hugely popular. You also have a syndicated show that's number one in many of the markets that it's carried in. Of everything that I've mentioned, everything else you've accomplished, what are you personally most proud of at this point? Well, I think uh, the idea of being on the radio for you know 50 years is, is an accomplishment. Uh, to be able to stay uh, in, in business and uh, with the various kinds of music that have come and gone and, and to still uh, you know be in there in the front lines and still get ratings and which are much harder to come by these days the competition being a lot rougher in big cities like you know los angeles and las vegas and san diego where our show is number one in most demos um i think that's the thing longevity you know a lot of people come and go and not only in radio business but in other businesses too tv and movies and uh, other branches of show business so the idea is to try to stay there as long as you can. Um, that's it. Has your show always featured, and has it always been your vision to have dedications, or is that something that your show has just evolved into naturally? All that, it just happened, you know. Uh, people would call and ask me for certain things, and, and uh, in those days there were not a whole lot of records released. So we had just about everything people would ask for. And um, so it started by people... Um, asking me, you know, a lot of times 
if you just uh, you find that uh, some sort of um, show business kind of seeks its own level, also radio, you know, the, where what you put on the air, people will, if you listen, and so by communicating with the audience, it's kind of a built-in research, and it just started that way. Matter of fact, when I was first started doing it, we didn't have telephones where you could speak both ways. That technology wasn't there yet. So I, we had telephone, of course, so people would call in and say, hi, uh, I'm from, you know, Las Cruces. Uh, I'd say, well, okay, that's all. That would that would be what I would hear. And I'd say, oh, you're from Las Cruces. So I'd kind of echo what the listener was saying as well as what I was saying. So they weren't really able to talk on the air then. But, but then very shortly after that, it all happened. Always, I've always tried to be in communication with the audience to see what they want and then kind of be a servant to the people, if you want to put it that way. Right. Now, let's fast forward to 2013. What are you currently working on? What do you have going on? Well, I'm writing a book um, that is pretty well finished. It's not just about me, but about all the different disc jockeys and music people and um, artists that I've known over the years that I've had on my shows and and uh, different funny things that happen to people in radio, which I'm sure happen to you and and others, you know, things you don't expect. And uh, I'm doing that, and I'm also staying in radio, and radio's always been the thing I like to do the most. I did have my own TV show in the 60s, the late 60s, and um, I like doing that too, but the difference between television and radio is radio, you're kind of your own producer and director and an actor, if you want to put it that way. And, and, and television, it's a kind of a combination thing. You're always working with at least uh, a few people, at least six, depending on the size of the station, it may be anywhere from four to, you know, 24. So it's kind of a group thing in television, where radio is, is just you, almost, unless you have an engineer working with you, and that's about it. Well, there's something about that that, that that's kind of nice because you're in control of your own destiny, you know. Television, you have a director and they tell you to go here and stand over here and do this and say that. So radio has always been uh, kind of my main thing. Another thing you do is give back to the Art LeBeau Foundation. Talk a little bit about what your goal was when you started the Art LeBeau Foundation. Well, I have been involved in some radio station ownership and... Um, partial ownership and um, with Bob Hope and uh, others in the, the 70s and when I sold my interest I made a pretty good chunk of money and I started the Art LeBeau Foundation started giving scholarships to some of the East LA schools and people that I helped thought helped me along the way to have some success and uh, so uh, when I can I try to help people along the way I have with not only people but animals with the Art LeBeau Foundation. We have the Art LeBeau Pet Food Bank here for people that are sick that have pets uh, uh, that are, you know, uh, have AIDS or other sicknesses that may be terminal and they have an animal and can't afford to keep them. They can get free food for their animals at the uh, Art LeBeau Food Bank. We have scholarships that we give to some of the schools that I felt people uh, couple of generations ago helped me get started. Now looking back, what are some of the biggest sacrifices you had to make to achieve the level of success that you've been able to achieve? Well, I think, you know, when I started on some of my first jobs, uh, you know, I worked at KPMO in Pomona, which was uh, right after World War II. It was kind of, kind of in a Quonset hut, and I used to come in, sweep the floor in the morning throw out all the trash and then go on the air. I was the morning guy. And so I don't know if that's a sacrifice, but it seemed, you know, you didn't make very much money, just barely enough to pay rent and, and get going. So uh, I never always felt I was doing what I really loved to do. So I never really looked at it like a sacrifice. I looked at it, you know, like an opportunity. And little by little, things, other things came along and started to happen, especially rock and roll. And I came along and, 50s uh, in LA, I was decided I wanted to try to play this music. I was doing a show at a drive in restaurant, and so there were a lot of kids around, and they used to tell me what they, they wanted to hear. I don't know how they found it, they didn't hear it anywhere else. Had a way of, of having music that they 
would first find, and I would start playing it, and it, of course it became very popular right at the same time that rock and roll got started. I kind of got started, I mean, into some more important you know, position. So rock and roll and I kind of started at the same time as far as success goes. What would you want to say to all your fans, anyone who's picked up one of your compilations, anyone who's had a chance to hear you at one of the stations you've been at, just to all your fans who've been down with Art LeBeau? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to talk to someone like you, and I don't think your career is a long ways, uh, been going for a long time, but it sounds like you got a good start, and um, I just think that uh, everybody should persevere. Sometimes, uh, you know, things happen, and somebody comes along, and for whatever reason, a radio station sold and you lose your job and it can be kind of disappointing. But then you have to kind of stay in there, you know, and never want to give up. And um, I think I think that's the main thing, you know, perseverance uh, is a great thing to have if you want to be in any kind of show business. Go ahead and give us the links. Where can people interact with and keep up with Art LeBeau? Well, there's artlebeau.com, which pretty well... Um, my last name is spelled L-A-B-O-E, so it's artlebeau.com. You can listen to my show. Um, uh, on, um, on and There's a link that takes you over to Hot 92.3. So the actual world, worldwide link is hot923.com. And there I'm always on live from 7 to midnight California time. And I am on the air in uh, Albuquerque on Sunday nights. And uh, so I'm on like 14 stations, and you can hear me on iPhones and on the Internet all over the world. And I still get calls from Iraq and Afghanistan, places like that where our servicemen are and, and women, and they call and make dedications for people at home on one of the stations or more that I happen to be on. We talk. I enjoy doing that. I've always talked to listeners all throughout my whole career as part of my radio program and i imagine you do that some of that too right like you're doing right now you know thank everybody that has listened to me and that may know me in your area and yourself for um listening to our programs and my programs and the oldies uh oldies but goodies uh, which you know one great thing about this music is old music some of it and it's good music and there's something about um, the past when you play a song that somebody in high school even and play a song that's five years old and they remember it from junior high and that is for young people and think, oh, that, that, that brings back a lot of memories, you know, it has a lot of impact. And then as they get older in life, they still want to rehear the, some of the songs that they heard in the past. And, uh, you know, memory is a very strong uh, emotion and so I think that uh, that whole my whole career has kind of been built around playing music that brings back memories and certain emotions of a certain time in a person's life. That's what the oldies are all about. I got to tell you, one of my prized possessions, of course, my autographed Art LeBeau bobblehead. How did the bobblehead come about in the first place? Well, that came about the concerts that I do, and and people brought it up. Bobbleheads became kind of a popular thing here, maybe five or between five and ten years ago. So we made these bobbleheads uh, to sell at the concerts, and people really liked them. So it was just something that we added uh, at the concerts, that besides our T-shirts and other things, uh, keychains and other things that sold at our concerts. So that's how that came about. And then go ahead and give us the link one more time. Where could listeners go ahead, purchase the bobblehead, and purchase any of your past compilations as well? Well, uh, we... We have a, a address in Hollywood. Uh, it's 7120 Sunset Boulevard, LA 90046. And uh, we have a phone number there at our studio. It's 323 851 2500. That's 323 851 2500. Some people call there and want to find oldies for goodies they can't get anywhere else and we do ship them out mail order primarily uh now these days i'm just in radio and uh, great to be on your station with you henry g 
and um, uh, you wish you a lot of luck in your career. My pleasure. I truly appreciate you being part of On a Sunday Afternoon with your boy Henry G. right here on Hot 103. Anything you want to say to the listener out there going through their daily struggle in life, but at the same time aspiring, working hard to reach their goals and their dreams? I'd say what I said a few minutes ago, perseverance. Just keep going no matter how, you know, you can't get a job uh, on radio or want to be in show business and people you get discouraged. Uh, you remember, if you stop, it all stops. So you have to just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying some more and get an opportunity here and another one there and pretty soon you're doing it. I mean, you yourself are doing that. Right. That's, that's the way it works. It usually starts uh, we're only on a smaller station and progress into bigger cities, which is where all the action is. And, but it's nice to be on the air in small cities too. I was on many pumps small cities, Pomona, California, Palm Springs, California. And, um, you know, when you as you start, the thing about being on the radio with, in the small towns is you get to know your listeners almost personally. I mean, they come to the station or you see them at a record hop or whatever you do. And, and uh, that's the good part about being on small stations where when you're in a big city, you um, We'll have a concert or something where 10,000 people show up. You can't shake hands with everybody and get to know everybody as much as you can in a smaller city. Art LeBeau, want to thank you for being a part of On a Sunday Afternoon. Truly appreciate it. Truly an honor. Thanks once again for being a part of On a Sunday Afternoon with your boy Henry G. right here on Hot 103. Well, you keep on keeping on, Henry. We'll look forward to having a star on the Walk of Fame for you.